Good evening. Today I'd like to address another of those underground related questions that has come up a couple of times in the comments section. Namely, how come Euston Square is separate from Euston? It's a good question. It's a very good question. The Victoria and Northern Lines are both connected to Euston Station directly. Why not the Metropolitan Circle and Hammersmith and City Lines? They aren't far from the rest at all. And let's dwell for a moment on the irony that Euston Station is actually closer to Euston Square than Euston Square is. Well, the first point we need to note is that most of the early underground stations in London, and when I say early, I mean before the First World War, so basically all of them, were not originally built to connect directly with the mainline termini. If you wanted to change to the underground, you had to do what you do at Euston, i.e. leave the main station and enter a separate tube station. This entrance here at Liverpool Street is an example of that, as is this one at Paddington. Even Euston has this building here, which was once how you got into the Northern Line. King's Cross Metropolitan Line was originally here, completely separate from the main station. In the particular case of Euston, they didn't want to make it easy for people to get to the underground lines. Euston was owned by the London and North Western Railway, who had an alliance with, and later a controlling interest, in the North London Railway. The North London Railway had a terminus in the City of London at Broad Street, so the LNWR felt like the Metropolitan were stealing their traffic. Well, they kind of were. The route from Euston Square to the city was way quicker than the LNWR North London Railway route. So of course people preferred that. In retrospect, this all seems incredibly short-sighted, but as I have said before, the concept of an integrated public transport network didn't really come along in Britain until the 20th century, and well into the 20th century. It simply didn't occur to people that a quick in-station interchange was a good idea. Of course, as the 20th century progressed and American ideas about public transport took hold, people started to see the virtues of direct interchange at the Termini without a lot of faffing about. But by then it was, mostly, too late. The stations were complete. Marlebon was one of the few that got in on the ground floor, allowing the Bakerloo Railway access from the beginning. On the ground floor? Should that be in the basement? Well, anyway. And the Waterloo and City Line was accessible from Waterloo Mainline Station because the Waterloo and City Line was set up by the Mainline Company. But as for the rest, what tended to happen was that interchanges would be built in when stations came up for rebuilding. When the whole station was being rebuilt, it was much easier to throw in a couple of underground passageways. In some cases, they moved the entire underground station, which is why you've never used Paddington Bishop's Road or King's Cross Metropolitan. Some of you will no doubt be saying, hold on, smart guy, but Euston was rebuilt in the 20th century. It used to look like this. Your explanation makes no sense. Why must you lie like this? To which I would say, yes, you are correct. About the rebuilding, at least. Euston was indeed rebuilt in the 1960s. At that time, a direct entrance to the Northern Line was built and the Victoria Line was in the planning stages, so they could incorporate the new platforms into the new design. But what's key here is the time the rebuild happened, the 1960s. So when Euston was originally built, there were carriage sidings under the station. When those were removed, they left a lovely big space you could stick a passageway in there or whatever you liked. But in the 1960s, it was assumed that the railways were a dying form of transit, and public transport would wither away in favour of cars. In fact, in some places, they were actively planning for a time when the railways would close altogether. There were ideas to turn Marlebon into a coach depot, and Victoria into a heliport. So when British Rail saw all this space under the station, they thought, well, that'd be a nice place to put a car park. That car park sat between Euston and Euston Square, blocking any potential passageway. Building anything else, say, below the car park, just wasn't considered worth it, economically speaking. So that's where we are today. The mistakes of the past are the problems of the present, because the lack of a direct link between the two stations has contributed to overcrowding on the Northern and Victoria lines. People either aren't aware of Euston Square or don't want to leave Euston Station, so they often take the crowded Northern and Victoria lines, even when it would be easier to get to their destination from Euston Square. 
This despite the fact that in real, objective terms it's far from the worst change on the network. Look at the hassle of changing at Charing Cross or Bank, for instance. I think it's a psychological thing. People just think of the two as separate, and that creates a psychological barrier, so you think of them as being further apart than they actually are. But the future looks bright. Euston Station is being rebuilt again to allow High Speed 2 in, and this is a massive modern rebuild. It has its downsides. This building will have to go, for instance. But it will improve local connections drastically. There is to be a travelator all the way to King's Cross and St Pancras. There will be a subway across Euston Road. And finally, after 160 years, there will be a corridor connecting Euston and Euston Square. And this video will be obsolete. That was a waste of time, wasn't it? Well, I hope you enjoyed this disconnected tale from the tube. If so, please do click the like button and subscribe for more. What's your opinion, though? Do you change between Euston and Euston Square? Would you do so more often if there was a corridor there? And what about the name? Should Euston Square just be renamed to Euston, or would you prefer to keep the old name even if the stations were connected? Let me know in the comments. I'd like, as always, to thank my donors on Kofi and Patreon, you are the mainline terminal rebuild, to my underground station entrance. And I'll see you all again very soon for another Tale from the Tube.